Okay, so this is one of those vlog type videos where we take a task I've been needing to do and might as well take you guys along for the ride so you might learn something along the way. If you remember this system right here, this is the latest edition of Skunk Works. No, it doesn't have the SMA8 or any of that. We did a whole build series about it. You guys can go and look it up. But uh, I said I built this here as, and it's very dusty, I need to clean it out already. I built this as a replacement for my station I've been using here at work. It's got Threadripper in it, uh, 3960X I believe it was. 3090 in here, water cooled, just a bigger, badder version of the white build that I did for Corsair, which was a tutorial on how to build a water cooling loop. So today we're gonna go ahead and get this one set up with my operating system for my old, oh, my technically new old system and show you guys exactly how it's gonna work with the Windows 10 to Windows 11 conversion and all that stuff. Corsair's new 32-inch Xenion 1440p gaming monitor has the features you need to play your best. Features like silky smooth 165Hz refresh rate IPS display with 1 millisecond MPRT response time, Quantum Dot technology HDR400, and built-in mount for either a microphone, webcam, or even a DSLR. To see the complete list of features of the Corsair Xenion 32-inch gaming monitor, follow the link in the description below. So you guys can see this is Windows 10 install on here. I don't even remember putting Phasmophobia on this machine, but there it is right there. So this is just a bare bones uh, OS install that allowed me to then come in here and get all the lighting ready for the video that we did where I showed you guys that it was all green. This OS is literally nothing more than just running the RGB software right now. Um, in fact, the only drive I believe that's even on here right now is, yeah, it's this one two terabyte NVMe SSD that's got the EK heatsink on it right there. How hot is that? Oh, it works, it's warm. So that's that green one down there. The green doesn't even match. So we'll be getting rid of that today and we will be adding in the SSDs on my white build back there. You see the white build? That's the 5000 um, X airflow, or that's the 5000D airflow. This is a 7000D airflow, so it's the bigger brother, obviously. But that system over there is actually in installed and updated to Windows 11 because obviously I need to do testing and stuff with that and give first-hand user reports on whether or not it's worth upgrading to. And obviously I've got to be using it to give you those pieces of information. But I don't want to go through the trouble of reinstalling all my software, reinstalling all of my encryption stuff, reinstalling all of my network location stuff, reinstalling all of my password keepers and games, and I just want to transfer it over here. So I've showed you guys in the past how Windows will actually allow you to like change the drive to another system and I've showed you how it will actually detect the new hardware, set itself up and bring you back into the desktop. But because it is DRM, you would uh, probably be given an activation notice, like you have to reactivate the system because it noticed too much hardware changed. But I'm curious as to how that's gonna work with Windows 11. So we're going from a, a 5900X Ryzen CPU in the white build to a 3960X Threadripper system uh, in this build. I think the very first thing I'm gonna have to do is maybe update this BIOS and I need to check trusted platform or TPM. Because remember, TPM 2.0 has to be active for Windows 11 to work. So I wanna make sure that the system is set up and ready to go first. I believe this motherboard should have TPM. Yeah, a, see it's right here. It's called AMD FTPM configuration in the ASUS BIOS for the Ryzen CPU or the uh, Third Ripper motherboard. Discrete TPM. Erase FTPM MV for factory reset. So discrete TPM, firmware TPM. It should boot absolutely fine um, with the drives put in here because all that Windows is gonna do on boot is check, is TPM 2.0 active? Is it there, is it active? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the drives. I'm gonna put them on this guy right here. I'm not sure if they'll boot off this, but I'm gonna try it. Um, this is the ROG Hyper M.2 card. It allows me to put two M.2 drives on here and then it goes into the PCIe Gen 4 <clears throat> and then it just looks cool. Then it's easier to get this in and out. I could also just do the dim.2, which is right there, but I think this will be cooler down underneath the GPU. I've actually, this came with the 12th gen Intel uh, motherboard, which is kind of funny, but I'm gonna be blasphemous and I'm gonna put it in an AMD board because why not? Okay, so I gotta get the drives out of here. I can't remember where I installed them on this motherboard. I really hope they're not underneath the GPU somewhere. They used to put the M.2s up closer to the CPU and then you have to remove your graphics card to get to them, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It was really, really stuck. Look, you can still see they're stuck to the drive there. Oh, I don't remember which one is my actual, oh. I don't remember which one was my, my drive. 
It had the OS on it. Okay, so these are my two drives. Thermal pads. I think if I have a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 on the same bus, it'll reduce the speed of the Gen 4 to a Gen 3. But you know what though? I don't care because in day-to-day -day usage, there's, you cannot, nobody in a blind taste test would be able to tell if you're on Gen 3 or Gen 4. All right, so now we got that all set up. We need to install it in here. So I'm gonna install this in the slot directly under the GPU if it won't, if it doesn't interfere with this. Well, I can't because the bracket's there. No. The crappiest thing about this is if it doesn't boot off this for some reason, then I'm gonna have to take them out and put them on the motherboard, which is not that much work. So before I boot this up, one important thing I had to do before doing any of this is I had updates I needed to complete on the system when it was still 5900X. So, that button's really hard to push. I'm gonna see now just what happens. Like, is it gonna go straight to the BIOS? Is it gonna even see the drives? I'm curious. I do like the way that looks though, under there. Just let it boot. Oh, oh, that's a good sign. It's gonna go RGB crazy too on the fans because the Lee and Lee software isn't installed on this system. So what we should see right now is something along the lines of, yep, getting devices ready, yes! It still works, even on Windows 11. You never know. <laughs> you, you never know. So if this works properly, oh yeah, look at that. It just, the motherboard just now went to RGB puke. That's fine, I can reconfigure all the colors. Action Station, which is what I named that system over there. Look at that, exactly where we left off. Holy crap. Okay, okay. Okay, is my network location still there? Uh, yes, we still have network access. Here's all my thumbnails to our server. We call Big Ol' Flying, so it's got all my thumbnails. That's all there. Here's exports, these are all our videos. They're there. This PC, so this drive C, which is our two terabyte. Okay, so our second drive is not showing up. So I think all I'm gonna have to do right now is going to disk management. And I think I just need to give it a drive letter right here. Oh, it's not even showing up at all. Okay, that's a problem. I fear now that that Toshiba drive <clears throat> is going to need to be brought off of the Hyper M.2 because what appears to be happening there is <clears throat> it switched to a PCIe Gen 4 interface, and that's probably not a PCIe Gen 4 drive. I don't think it is, which means that, uh, well, all that was on that drive was my games. I could honestly just throw another Corsair Gen 4 on there if I want and have plenty of storage for that. Or I can move it off of this and put it on the motherboard itself. And the same thing would happen too with the DIM.2 Although the DIM.2 should then just turn it down to, to PCIe Gen 3. I'm gonna go into the BIOS first. I'm gonna take a look at that device uh, for the M.2 setup. And I wanna see if I can just set the PCIe. I think the PCIe slot is right now set to Gen 4 for auto. I'm gonna set that to Gen 3 and then see if both drives show up. This is not the kind of thing you'd have to deal with if you weren't using like an M.2 PCIe card like this. Oh yeah, because that shows it's on PCIe, PCIe X16. Uh, underscore four. So I can leave PCIe Gen 4 on PCIe 1, and then the rest will be Gen 3. Because there's nothing else hooked up. I'm just gonna make sure I grab it all. Dim.2 link mode one and two. Oh yeah, see, that's where I could have set it Gen 3 and Gen 4, so if I had mixed drives on there. Now we should potentially see both. And it still doesn't show up. All right, so that's unfortunate. That means I'm not gonna be able to run both of those off of this particular card. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that Toshiba drive, and if you look, right there, right there is an M.2 slot. And I, I really hate to have to go through all this for that. 
so I've got this OCZ drive from Toshiba and I wanted to use it down there, but it doesn't match the theme. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just put the heat sink from EK back on there. These heat sinks only work if the chips are all on one side, which as you can see here, there's two chips on the back. This is also not going to work with that. I believe this might actually be, I think this is actually a Corsair, um, I don't remember what kind of drive it is. I'm just gonna leave it on there right now. I've got a P5 Plus right here, PCIe 4.0 NVMe from Crucial, two terabyte that I'll put on there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put this on the board with the other PCIe Gen 4, and I'm gonna use this that I bought. I forgot I bought this a long time ago. This is actually a USB-C to M.2 adapter. So then what I can do is when I go into Windows, I can plug this into USB-C, plug that in, and then I can copy the contents of that drive over to the new one because this is this only has my games on it. That's the only thing that's installed on this drive is the games. So as long as the game files are there, then I can just point the installer to that location and then all the games will immediately copy over. So I'm gonna do that. This is like, it was like 25 bucks I think for this. So I think this is gonna come in handy because I've got 2.5 and 3.5 docking bays, but since we don't use those drives hardly anymore, I need to get a new bay to have the M.2. Now, I kind of wish that it was a flat one that like snapped in like that because this, uh, this is a risk of breaking it. So you want to be very careful with this, obviously. Wait, first things first, did it even show up? No, it did not. Interesting, why? Whatever, I don't know why the second drive won't show up in that thing. What is the problem? They're both gen four drives. Yeah, it still doesn't show up, what the frick? Look at that. Still just that one drive. Oh, look, it's showing up now. It just needs a drive letter. Due to a fatal device hardware error. What? Oh, that's weird. So it sees the drive now, but it can't initialize it. So now I'm just gonna move it onto the motherboard. So I'm gonna take that thing out and apart again for like the 16th time. All right, here we go again. I thought that like getting Windows 11 to work on a new piece of hardware like this was gonna be the problem. <laughs> Not getting my secondary drive with all my games on it to show, which is still a big problem. How else am I gonna work without my game showing? Yay! There's an OS on that other drive too. Wait, what? Oh, that's right. That's right, okay. So I need to format that drive. I was like, yay, wait. So let's see if this works. So this is hot swap, so it should work fine. Yay, there it is. All right, local disk E. Uh-oh, why does not let click? No, okay. This PC is not responding. Fine, it's probably still indexing the drive. We'll give it a minute. E is not accessible, request due to fatal device hardware error. What happened to this drive? Well, if I gotta reinstall my games, I gotta reinstall my games, but suddenly like this drive is just giving us fatal errors. It worked fine when I took it out of there. Now suddenly it doesn't show up or work. Huh, okay, well that stinks, but what are you gonna do, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and format this drive. Yes, format, that's a secondary drive, okay. Why did my drive just disappear? Oh wait, no, this one disappeared. Wow, this drive is having some real issues suddenly. Okay, well, I guess that's it for today's video because my biggest concern was about getting my OS transferred over to here. And as you can see, it's all right here. It popped up and said disk E, Oh, hey, <laughs> small PP drive. I forgot I named it that. Now all the data shows. See, so has my Steam library and my World of Warships library. So startup, common. Oh, Battlefield 2042 is the only thing that's on there. No. Apparently I've not installed anything on that drive and all along I was just putting everything on my main drive. So I bet you if I look at my program files, if I go to Steam, and then I go to, where is it, common, right? Oh, Steam apps, common, 
There, there they are. 3D Mark American Trucks and Beeman GPC. Okay, well, I, you know what? I didn't even need to do any of that crap. It's okay, it all worked. Took you guys along for the ride. Like I said, when we do a video like this, I'm about to do something. I take you guys along for the ride because it might mean something to someone or help someone figure out a problem or whatever they're experiencing. The little external M.2 reader does work. The drive was just having some weird issues initially, but it now works. And uh, if I wanted to quickly and easily transfer over or even clone, if I wanted to do a drive clone so I could just clone the drive or image or whatever, then I could use something like that to do it. USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 or whatever it is. Um, would be plenty fast to be able to transfer data and it wouldn't be painfully slow. I just now have to get my Lee and Lee Connect 2 software on here so I can get all my fans set to the right uh, colors and then get all the ROG stuff set up back to green. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to link links down below for these external drives and uh, readers so that you can do this easier yourself. But as you can see, we were able to take the drives out of a Windows uh, 11 build on Ryzen 5900X went right into a Threadripper system. So far, I haven't gotten the, you have to activate Windows, but that could take a bit. It's been connected to the internet the whole time. As long as your updates are done first, you don't have updates that are pending. Like they haven't downloaded and are waiting to install. Cause then if that were the case and I put the drive in here and it's trying to install based on the hardware that it saw, cause sometimes it'll take um, certain files that might be specific to the hardware and you then try and install it on here, it could cause problems. As long as all, all your updates are complete, you can move the drives around. I could have even moved it to an Intel system and it would have been fine. Because when Windows does the getting devices ready, that's when it's installing its drivers and stuff based on the chipset and the CPU and the RAM that's installed. It's like the third time I've done a video like this, but I, I always have people asking me, can I move my drives from one hardware to another or will it not work? As you can see, it works fine. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one.